Ok. Kum lenen ablak mora, agud chedesh, chedesh mar cheshven. First day was chedesh mar cheshven. Today's daf is daf lamed vav and aleph. We are actually already middle of the page. The two dots of mechasin that's at pedes. We say over here, you're allowed to cover the fruits if it's going to get wet from the rain. You can go cover the head with a with material, or um, in the same thing we said, you can also um, um, you can cover barrels of wine and oil. And we did have a machlekes in the Gemara and Shabbos. We had a machlekes of Bishchok holds that ain keli nitl el ledover hanit, which means you you cannot move an object uh, to cover say, another object unless the other object can also be moved. If it cannot be moved, other object moves, then you cannot move object A. For benefiting object B, if object B is muktzah, and the other Amarim hold that's not the case, you can definitely move object A for object B, even if object B is not a dover hanit. Says the Gemara, mechasin as I paid to cover the fruits. Amar ula se ula, I feel I've even if you have let's say bricks piled up on top of each other and ready for let's say building, so it's muktzah and rain is coming down. And in those days, this, the concrete was like today, and if the rain's hot enough, it can just fall apart. It can disintegrate and fall apart. You're allowed to move um, some akalim or anything to cover them, to cover these bricks. Even though the bricks themselves cannot be moved, you're permitted to, to, to move one item to cover another item, because other item is moved. However, Rabbi said, paid is a ruin. The only thing that you're allowed to cover are fruits that are not moved, so you can use on yamta. So the Gemara, why? But all the Rabbi said, maybe it's consistent with this view. The Rabbi said, ain't clean, little, ella, dover, and little, Shabbos. The Kaylee cannot be moved only for something that can be, is movable on Shabbos. Says, well, let's look at our mission. No, no, mission. It says, Mechassin is a page of Bekalim. Says you can cover fruits with different vessels. Seems clearly only fruit, something which is edible, something which is a mukta. Page is in Avida the Libna night. So this proves the support of the Bitchak that for something that mukta in Allah cover. So they answer back. Their response is no. Who had in the Afilo the Avida the Libna? Even just bricks also. Now, the idea that the Tanah the Misha opened up with Mashilin Pedis, talks about dropping the fruits if it's about to rain through the skylight. That definitely only applies to fruits because they are dealing with the fruits themselves. It's Tanah Seif and Amim Chasen the Pedis. So then from the Seif, it talks about fruits, the same fruits, but really it's unlimited. It can be Muktzah, a lot of cover Muktzah to protect it from the rain. So let's go to the next part of the Mishnah. It says, I think the barrels of wine, barrels of oil. Now here, what's the Mishnah trying to do? It's trying to give more examples, things that you wouldn't have known on its own. So the um, we're talking about barrels of wine and barrels of oil. But first, is um, we have a question on Abizcha. It seems, if the Mishnah felt, uh, sorry, it said, here we see a proof to Abizcha. Because if the Mishnah felt that you can cover bricks, for example, then why choose an example of barrels of wine, barrels of oil? Choose a, a better example. Two examples of bricks that are mukta. Doesn't that show that it's limited only to things which are edible? So, no, we're talking about here, but we're talking about barrels of wine, barrels of oil that are still in the state of tevel. In other words, they're still mukta. You haven't given the true maisa. And the Mishnah is telling you a lot of cover things which are mukta. Now, even though, as Tasha says over here, we learned yesterday that we learned yesterday in the Gemara that um, the Kiddush of the previous Mishnah was that something like that when you didn't give Truma Maisa from, which is Muktza. It's still Muchnu it's a Shabbos. It's ready to be used in Shabbos. You no, know, but the ever if you did give Truma Maisa, it's a valid Truma Maisa. So Lechayda, it's not really Muktza. So to explain, but the fact is that right now you haven't done it yet. So right now it's a state of Muktza. So according to this book, you shouldn't be able to cover it. Anyway, so the Gemara says, no, we're talking about a case over here of barrels of wine and barrels of oil that are in a state of Tevel. And therefore, they are mukta, and yet you're allowed to cover it. And that's what the, those who argue with Chok say. And Chokin, I'm saying, you prove it to you. These are the Kadiyan Shemin means, well, if you mean barrels of wine, or literally wine and oil, then what's the what's the Kiddush of wine and oil over Pedis? The Hatay, the Hatan, the It says right in the beginning, Pedis. What's the Kiddush of wine and oil? What's the, not only fruit, but also barrels of wine, barrels of oil. What's the Kiddush there? Well, that's not a proof. Because I can say really, is going to say we're talking about only wine and oil that's edible. That's why you're allowed to cover it. So why why do we need to tell us that? We already know from fruits. No. Remember the wine and oil inside a barrel. And for a barrel to get room, it takes a lot of rain. It only gets, it'll only get room slightly. 
When it comes to the case, let's say, of fruits, you have to cover it because the brain will ruin it completely. So they feel permitted to cover it. But where there's only a slight damage, for example, the wine inside a barrel, and when you say you can remove the barrel and tip whatever water off. So that no, that even a slight hezek is enough to give reason, grounds to cover it. So no proof to the Yishchak or against the Yishchak. Tanan, it says further in the Mishnah, Noisin, let's continue the discussion. Noisin, Kaili, Tachas, Adela, Vishabas, Vish, Raining, Shabbos, in your house. You can put these empty pots and pans to collect the water and so on. And you um, can pour it out and put it back in. Now, the the rain itself is muktzah. What do the rain water? Nothing. So it's muktzah, and yet you're allowed to put vessels there to, to, to catch the water. Doesn't that show that you're allowed to, not like Rabbi Schach? Who said, Ain't Kaylee Nittle Ella the Dover Hanitle? You can only take a Kaylee for something that can be moved. So, when the answer is Bedella for all, it's all about rain that can be uh, that is drinkable, let's say for your animals. So, therefore, it's not Mooks at all. Toshma coming here from a Brice, it says, Persin Martellus Al Gabel of Shabbos, you're allowed to cover with a mat over bricks and Shabbos. Clearly, you're allowed to cover bricks and Shabbos. So the Kasha Rabbi Yitzchok says, if it's Mokti, you cannot cover it. So we answer, the Ayatur Mibinyana, we're talking about bricks that were left over from the building. The Chazi from the building site, the Chazi Lemizgi Alayu. We're talking about bricks that are no longer going to be used for building. They're actually being used for chairs to sit on or to lean on. And therefore, it's not Mokti. Toshma coming here, Persi Machtzal Zagaba on the Shabbos. It says he allowed to cover a um, mat with over stones on Shabbos. Now, stones are Mokti, yet you're allowed to cover it. Says, but no, we're talking about stones that are not books. What kind of stones are they? Avoni mikrosalos. We have these pointed stones. The chazin lebeisa kisa. They use them in the toilet for cleaning themselves. So therefore, uh, uh, therefore, it's not books. Toshma coming here. It says in another place that person machtelas al gabe kaberes the boidim b'shabes. You permitted to cover a mat over a beehive on shabes b'chamba if it's very hot in mene chamba. You want to protect. The high from the sun will be shaman with next shaman. Now it's muktzah, you know, that like, you know, take, take the beach and the yas and on yom tov and shabbos. So it's definitely muktzah, and yet, and yet you're allowed to cover it. Kasha bishchak, but the only proviso is the bavachal is kavan lotzah as long as you have no intention of trapping the bees, because then you have a problem of trapping. Says you must not make it vash. No matter there was honey there as well, so you're protecting the honey. That part isn't mukt. Omelet Amiko Mishra Bashi Hote Nach makes sense by the Khamba, there's honey in the beehive. Okay, you're protecting the honey. Dika Tavash. Obin Maisak Shama make a member. In the winter, what are you going to say? In the winter, there's no honey. We're going to say that. So you want to learn, learn on this from needed. Ella Oisan Shtechalas. They used to put there over there two hives or inside the inside the cylinder. And um, and that's where um, the bees. Get all the sustenance from in, in throughout the winter as well, and those two chalos you permitted to cover. You allowed to cover them, and and and, and that's what we're talking about here. So you want to ask a question, but that doesn't help the bishchak. Those two chalos are, are dedicated for the bees. They're not these hundred comes enough for me to eat. They're for the bees to to nest on, and therefore, if it's for the bees, it's muksa, and yet you're allowed to cover it. Isn't that a kasha on the bishchak? So I said, how You know what we're talking about here? The chishev. Alayhem. Talking about over here that you thought that maybe you will also take some uh, something from that hive, so it's therefore it's not really muksa. Right? You thought you'll use it for your own food as well. Says so what are you telling me? I will If you didn't think about those those hives, what happened? My asr. You would tell me then that if you didn't think about it, it would be um it would be asr because it is muksa. The court of Israel you know, covers something muksa. If so, why tell us give us a proviso? Don't trap the bees. Tell us more important, provided that you had a mind. To use those um, those chalos. I don't know about this carbon lots. So literally, we did. Let's talk about itself. But Medra Morim Shechis Shalem and he thought about. I'm like Shechis Shalem also. So you want to hock them about this one? You mean? Afa Pish Shechis Shalem. Even though you thought about it, or the Vad Shaloi is carbon lots. That even though you thought about it, provided Shaloi is carbon lots. As long as he had no intention to trap, um, to trap those um, those bees. No, even if he thought about it. So Mukta is not an issue anymore. He removed that from the table. There's still another problem. The problem is they're not allowed to set in mind to have to trap them. Says the Gemara, um, that's a chiddush. It's not a question of Yitzchak. We're talking about you wanted to use the, those hives for yourself, so therefore it's not mukta. But as long as you don't want to trap the bees, says the Gemara. Mm-hmm. The came to so the whole idea we're talking about here. We're talking about mukta, and that's why we're talking about chalos. In other words, who holds a mukta? Rabbi Huda. and yet you're telling me, Maya, you came to Rabbi Huda, 
And then you tell me, as long as you have, you didn't have a mind to trap it. Sounds like they did not have a mind to trap it. Even though you ended up trapping it, not a problem. It's a Dover She'emus Kavan. But remember, according to Rabbi Yehuda, a Dover She'emus Kavan, you're liable on Shabbos. So how can it be the first part, Mukta is like Rabbi Yehuda, and the second part, Dover She'emus Kavan, you're telling me like Rabbi Shimon. Amos Sefer, look at the Sefer of Avach, he's got look at the he had no intention to trap the beast. Also, Rav Shimon, that follows Rav Shimon. The Amor says, Dover She'emus Kavan, Mutu. Now, sometimes the Gemara answers that, you know, it's one Tana who in this subject follows Rabbi Yehuda, and in the Mukta, let's say, and comes Rav Shimon, he follows Rav Shimon. The Gemara doesn't answer that because they have different answers. So, Gemara, but Tizbur, let me ask you a question. And you think the Dover She, you think it has to do with Dover, you know, Dover She Miskaven? You think it has to do here if you cover the 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 bee, the, the, the bees automatically get trapped. So uh, that's called a psychration. It has nothing to do with Dover She Miskaven. It is Rab Shimon, and it is my question. Rab Shimon, you think Rab Shimon, uh, Rab Shimon is the one who says over here about intention? What do you mean, attention? Even if you have no intention, it's a psychration, it's inevitable. So why, why does the Brazil ask a better question? Why does the Brazil say, provided you had no intention of trapping, who cares about intention? When it's inevitable, everyone agrees that you're liable. So the mother, I'll tell you, so therefore, it doesn't really have much of the Dov Shemesh Kavan now. The entire mission of Yudah, the first part is about Mukta, the Hoch, the Maya Skin, these big Kavi. It's not inevitable that you're going to trap the bees because there are windows there. I so therefore it's not situation new. So why does it say if you have no intention? Because of you, it doesn't matter if you have intention or not. It just matters. You trapped them, you're high. If you didn't, you didn't. So you're right. Let's change one word in the Bryce. Like Tame, but do not read Lit Abhuda. Don't read Ubavachala Yiskavan Lux as long as you had no intention to trap. Ella Ama say Ubavachala Ya send them to the Bhavada, you don't make it a trap. Not we don't care about intention. All we care about is what actually happened. If it's a trap, then you are high. If it's not a trap, there's a window, it's not covered. The bees can fly about and get out, then you are potter. So you don't have shit I need the bride to tell me, provided you don't cover all the holes, you don't trap it. Everyone holds it if you trap it, you're high. So what's the bride even have to tell you that for? Now, Mount, I would have thought, when are you liable for trapping? This is, let's say, a kind of a species that you normally catch uh, an animal, so you normally trap or fish, whatever it is, and also, you now do that on your own shops. People don't only go out there and trap bees. Is mutter. Maybe then there's no issue at all of capturing commercial land that is still forbidden, with Rabban at least. So let's think about it further. Navasha, but Navasha is not the answer altogether. Let's go back to the original answer. We're talking about honey that is suitable for a person. I asked me a question in the winter, who has, who has honey in the winter? And you know, we said there's no mukti, we're talking about honey. There's honey inside. But if there's no, uh, if there's honey in the winter, there's no honey in the winter. So Ravashi said, who told, told you to talk about winter? You assume Chama means summer and Shama means winter. No. Mik Tani be Maisa Chama in the winter, be Maisa, sorry, in the summer, be Maisa Shama in the winter. Big Chama, under the sun, Mipnei HaChama, or Big Shamim, and the rain, Mipnei HaChama. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about a time when it could be either one. Be Yemen Nisna, be Yemen Tisha. We're talking about, you know, like spring and fall. And over there, you know, it could be hot, it could be cold, the rainy, the Ika Chama, the Ika Shama. You have both. You have sun, you have rain. And the Ikat Vash, and there's still honey there. So there's no problem of muksa because there's honey there. And that's what Abishko will say. We're talking about why you're allowed to put a cover on it to protect the honey. Then it's a very nice case. You're allowed to put the empty pots and vessels to trap the water that's coming down from the rain. Tell me, learn in the small Kaili, if, if you, the vessel you put down, they filled up with water. Shaifa, you can pour them out outside, Vishayna, and repeat them again. Bring more Kaili, more, bring them back. The Aina Nimna, you don't have to avoid that at all. Um, even you have to do 10 times, you have to do 10 times. You're allowed to do that. So the more interesting story. It teaches a lesson here. Beira Chaye, the Abaye, the mill of Abaye, it was, which is, um, it, it was raining on it, and it was, I guess, made out of these, uh, it was made out of cement. And for rain, in those days, cement wasn't that tough, and if it rains hard enough, it'll eventually fall apart. It's Beira Chaye, the Abaye, Dolov, it was raining on top of it, and it looked like inevitably it's going to fall apart. And he didn't have enough pots and pans to catch the rainwater, so it shouldn't ruin the mill. Also, the camera is what should I do here? Omelay um, well, said, This is what you should do. Zeal, go ahead. I'll give you a little chasmah. Bring your bed outside, right next to your mill, as if you want to go to sleep there. The mill is a disgusting thing. So that will allow you, even though it's a dedicated, it's a cliche malach lisa, or it's a malach lisa, it will allow you to move it. Why? Because we have a rule. The lehedi kigraf shorai, it's like a bucket for um, for uh, wastes, 
and and for, um, and therefore you're allowed to move it. So you're allowed to move the middle then out away from the rain, but you can't move it otherwise. Moksa. So here's the excuse: bring your bed over there, uh, and that's how we do it. And we'll save you. You'll save your milk. Says the more of Yosef Abay, the Kakash Abay, as usual, can't hold us all back. He asked Rabbi a question. Sure, the Chi Oisin Grav Shoroi Lechatchila. The story is that if there happens to be one, you're allowed to move it around the Shabbos, but you're allowed to Lechatchila put yourself in a situation where you're turning something into a Grav Shoroi in order to take it out. And Rabbi felt that even though you're right, generally you're not allowed to, but here because of the loss of money, that uh, that you're allowed to. Um. Um. Um, in the meantime, Abaya was being mafalful with Rabbi and listened to him. Not for Bela Chayed, the Abaya. The whole, the, the, the whole mill fell apart. Um, his mill fell apart because the rain and rain, and he didn't want to listen to the Omar, Abaya said the following Tasily, I deserve this. The Ovri Adamar, I didn't listen to my teacher, even though he was Michael of my Rebbe, who, as my Rebbe said something, I should have listened. And I didn't, and therefore I lost my mill. Maybe an interesting lesson in life. If you have your rov that you uh, cho chose, you have to listen to your rov, whether you agree or whether you don't agree. <clears throat> and another thing why perhaps the rabbi felt you're allowed to not only because of monetary loss, because it's already raining. It's not like you're, you're creating a situation. The rain is already there. And therefore, it's not like the chachil we said before, you're not allowed to you know, call it a go, you're not allowed to start things out. This is not started, it's right in the middle. It's raining, it's about to ruin it, so it's a different thing. Says he went further, talking about Grav Sharai. Anyway, important lesson in life. How much more is more? Grav Sharai, but obviously, they're both exactly the same thing, but Grav is what's said is, is mainly for uh, excrements, and uh, Ovid is mainly for urine. Mutu Lahitzi and Ashba, the full of Shabbat, you'll have to take it out and put it into the, into the tip. Ovid Akushu Marzira, but you cannot bring it back. Nice and by Mayim, you should put some water in this so you bring it back for the sake of the water. Because these Kalim are Muksa Machmasmis. And Muksa Machmis is not allowed to move. But if you put water in there, um, then you can move it. Um, that's how you bring it back. That's why there's a whole discussion if you're allowed to bring the rubbish bins back on Yom Tif from outside. But is, is, a, is a rubbish bin like a Grof Sharoi? And if it's a Grof Sharoi, you cannot bring smoke to Machas Mias, and you cannot bring it back unless, unless uh, you have something else in there that you need. Others say that our rubbish bins today, everything is inside a bag. So therefore, it's not really um, considered a Grof Sharoi. Anyway, um, so, um, <clears throat> So he, from the Shmuel, the students thought that a Grof Shoroi is only uh, uh, permitted, not before the, the thing itself, but Agav the Kali. <clears throat> In other words, they thought that the Roy itself, the Ekrim itself, you know, let's take out, it's because it's sitting inside this particular uh, vessel that's dedicated for that. Therefore, Agav the vessel, the latter take it out. That's what they thought. So Toshma coming here a story that who barter there was a mouse, the Stakka Bef Pamarki de Ravashi, a mouse that found itself its way into the spices of Ravashi's house. Omlu Ravashi, Ravashi said to the students, knock the bitsutsisa, grab a hold of its tail, the afku, and toss it out. So we see that the, the, the roy itself, the mouse, you allow to pick up and throw it out. So the mouse is a meas guy. So the mission further, kol shechayovin alav mishu shvus. Anything which you chayiv mid the rabbon that you shouldn't do on Shabbos because the shvus is not in the spirit of resting, or mishum rishus, or it's not just something you do. It's something or rishus are those kind of mitzvahs that are sort of not mandatory, but if you do them, it's a good thing. Or mishum mitzvah, or even if um, there's a mitzvah. Rashi used the expression rishus tzas mitzvah, a little bit of mitzvah, but not a mitzvah gedolah. Interesting expression. Where the Ramam um, determines the uh, Rishus is, is mitzvahs that you're not mandatory, but if you did it, you fulfilled the mitzvah. Rashi says, Tzas mitzvah, avaloi mitzvah g'dayla. Interesting way of, of defining it. And it's almost like Rishus. Uh, if there's an issue to Rabban and Shabbos to do them, or even if there's a mitzvah, if Mamish is a mitzvah, yet you now do that on Shabbos for the reasons we'll soon see, then Chayobin will be under the same thing, you'll do them and as well. Whether there's, it's something that you want to do for yourself or whether it's a shusha, let's see, you know, I'll do. 
What can't you do on Shabbos? It's just because you have to rest. It's the right. Because you might break branches. Nor can you ride an animal on Shabbos. In our Gemara, it says because you might break a branch. And Yerushalmi says the reason why you're not allowed to ride an animal is because an animal is, um, your animal is meant to rest on Shabbos. And here, you are working with it. Or Tzabal Chaim. Nor can you swim on the water. We'll see what that is. We had it before. You're not allowed to clap your hands. You're not allowed to clap your hands against your knees. You should dance uh, because you might fix up a musical instrument. Those are all shusim, but you shouldn't do a Shabbos, nor can you do them on Yom The following are shusim, which means it's a small mitzvah. Um, and, and we would have thought that you're allowed to permit to do that. Hacham came along and said, don't. <clears throat> um, what about that? Lloyd Dunne, you're not allowed to judge a din Torah on Shabbos, including uh, Dini Mamanis. We already will have a Gemara heading for Punish, you're not allowed to do din in the Fashas at all. Because if, let's say, you decide that somebody should be killed, you cannot do that on Shabbos. When the Pasuk Bechom Ashrei Sechem. You're not allowed to do that on the Bezden, and uh, so you have to delay the, um, the Psak. And we don't want justice delayed. Justice delayed and justice denied. The lay make Kachin, you cannot marry a woman on Shabbos, get engaged. And the lay Chilzi, and these are all mitzvahs. I mean, these are all mitzvahs. Well, these are all called Rishus. If you did it, you're doing a mitzvah. We'll soon see why is Makachin only the Shus Lachayda to Mitzvah? Why is Din only the Shus to Mitzvah to, to Paskin? These are all Mitzvah, yet we call them the Shus. That if the husband dies in no children, then the woman, the wife, is either marries one of the brothers or, or the oldest brother, especially, or you receive the Chalitza. No, no, keep it down on Yamtit. The following are Mamashim Mitzvah, we don't like to do them. Like Magdishi, you know, make something hate because it's like a transaction. Nor can you say my value or your value of giving to Hector. You cannot consecrate your properties and say this animal is chedim. And usually it's for the maintenance of the base of Migdash. Nor can you do Truman Maisi because you're being Masak and Mana. Other sectors are actually like Brighton. Call Elu, be Yamta, all forbidden on Yamta, be called Elu, all the be Yamta, Amru, Kalchem, be Shabbos. The candle Yamta surely cannot do them with Shabbos. Ain bain Yamta, the Shabbos, Ella, Eichel, Nefesh, Bubba. The only thing Yamta, the Shabbos is Eichel, Nefesh. Says you let's go through more. Lay Oilam, you know, climb a tree, Xavier Shemitah, you might break over a branch. Lay Rachel, you know, ride an animal, Xavier Shemitah, you might break over The problem with riding an animal, you might initially thought is because you might travel outside of the Tchum. Shmami, no, it seems to me if you're making a Xavier, then it cannot be that the tchum is only with the rabbanon. They're not going to make a gzera. Don't go an animal because you might travel tchum. And if you did travel tchum, it's only the rabbanon. We don't do that. Shmam and amulachid and means tchum is the rais. I mean, that halach is not like that. El Some say that halach is like a rakiva that twelve mil. The Rambam holds that way, but everyone everyone holds a shorter distance. It's definitely, it's only the rabbanon. El gzera shem yachte zemur uskedi. You might pull down a branch. That's why you're not all right an animal. Loi shotin al penei. Um, no, can you swim? Gzeda, why not? What exactly is the problem? So Rashi learns Chavish Shoshayotin was like a floaty, a tube. They used to put together these, um, uh, you know, these reeds, they used to weave them together, made like a round barrel that was long, and that's how you learn how to swim. You might make a floaty. Other, other translate means you might make yourself a raft. Tasis learns. You might make yourself an uh, earthen keli. You bring the proof from somewhere else that shayotin is an earthen keli, klecheres, completely sealed, so therefore the water can't go in, and it bobs on top of the water, and then you hold on to it, and that's how you learn how to swim. So all of these things that we scared, you'll do something to learn how to swim. Now, you're not allowed to swim in Shabbos. It's very important in Halach that says you're not allowed to swim in Shabbos in a river. What about in a swimming pool? In your backyard. So Shvonorov uh, says, if you don't splash, if you splash, you swim, and you use your hands and your feet, and water breaches the banks of the pool, let's say it go, goes over the sides, then that's like a river, and you're not allowed to swim there in shops. So it seems clearly from that if you're not swimming or if you're not splashing, then you're allowed to. There's a machlek is if you're allowed to swim in a in a in a, in a place outside in the shusarabim, as well, uh, or not. And again, if you don't splash or anything else, then it's not part of the gzera. Like you're just treading water or sitting in the water and waiting in the water, but see if you're to. Says the Gemara, um, metapkin, 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 we already learned before, because anyway, why should be sacrificial? You might make some musical instruments, and we already learned taste before it says that today doesn't apply, and we already learned the Bishop says you're not allowed to, 
and at all, only the back of your hand you can clap. And then the Ramah says that Mutavi is shaking while Yim Bazidin. If you see somebody doing it, don't make a big issue out of it if they're doing it for mitzvah. And, a, and then he brings that uh, Taisa who says that you have to allowed to. And the Mikhail Laza says that uh, he brings a whole bunch of chubas and proofs that you are allowed to. And that's why Chsidim, they dance by Simcha Shalmitz. But important, you're not allowed to clap when it comes to a speech or that kind of thing, which is definitely not a Simcha Shalmitz. Says the Gemara, the Eilem Shus. The following are shus, like Donny, you know, a judge. Think about what mitzvah covered. Why is it called a shus? It's a mitzvah. Very interesting. It's a mitzvah for a dayan to judge a case. Whatever the case, if, if it's a country, a country is in two people, maybe because I was obviously it's a mitzvah to, uh, to paskin. So, what do you mean you're telling me that's only a shus? When you're a mitzvah to paskin, if you are it, but if there are other people in the city that are more qualified than you, then it's not incumbent upon you to take on the case. What about? Uh, you shouldn't marry a woman. You're marrying a woman. Why are you calling it a shus? Says the the isla isha bani. We're talking about a case where you have a wife and a child. So um, according to Bishama, two sons, and according to Hill, you get a, a boy and a girl. You already fulfill your mitzvah the tater of uh, of uh, pruravu, even though the mitzvah rabban or the of tan of yotcha. Nevertheless, that's only the rabban. But mahatayda, you already fulfilled your mitzvah. So the big machlek is a shame how to learn pshat here. So what happens if you did not fulfill your mitzvah yet? In other words, are we just explaining the Mishnah or we're actually defined, limiting the halacha? Now those who say we're just explaining the Mishnah, which is what the, what the halacha uh, mainly is, and that is, that even if you're, if you're not married and you have a mitzvah pura gu, you're still not allowed to get married on Shabbos, you're not allowed to have a chuppah, you're not allowed to do a kiddushin on Shabbos, we're just explaining why the Mishnah refers to it as a shus. But other than shame hold, that if you don't have any children and you're in the... And you, and you don't have a wife, then you're allowed to get Mekadish uh, on Shabbos itself. And Shulchan Aruch says, uh, you can do that. And what's the definition of Shas al Chak? So it's fascinating the Ramah Shulchan Aruch, and it seems this is very commonplace in those days. He says over there that, <coughs> that if the <coughs> if the Bukhatanim are still fighting out who's paying what for the wedding and the Nadan and so on and so forth, and the Chosna Kala all dressed up on Friday afternoon, all the guests are there waiting, and the wedding is not proceeding because the in-laws cannot come to terms. Finally, they only come to an agreement on Shabbos itself. Then we allow them to proceed with the Kedushin, because otherwise you're shaming the Chosna Kala. That's called Shas at Chak. And um, the, with the Chup itself is a problem because of Kenyan. The Mishnah Buru says, as a result of this, he holds that no one should make weddings on Fridays. But in fact, many people get married on Friday. You know, they're a on Friday. And today in Israel, I've been married on Friday. And even in New York, people are starting to get married on Friday. And one of the reasons is because you save yourself a lot of money. And um, you don't have to, uh, so the Shabbos you have to have anyway. People are dressed for Shabbos anyway. Makes it so much easier. But here, it's all based on this commodity here. Then you can quickly, like, you don't do chalitza, you don't do yibam, it's a mitzvah, a mitzvah kavit. How come you call it a shush? It's a mitzvah. The mitzvah is on the oldest brother. There's an older brother. Not him. So he is called it a shush. The cooler time in my All of these things. Why taka can't you do them on Shabbos? There are a number of reasons, but the main reason is we're scared that you might, for example, by the entire you might write down, record the psak din. When it comes to Kedushin, you have to maybe you, you, instead of giving money, you'll use a star. Chalitza, you have a star. And uh, Ksuva for Yavama. So all of these things, that's the problem. And just two more lines. The Eiluheim, which for Mitzvah, the following Mitzvah, we don't want you to do on Shabbos, and Yantiv, Le Maktishin, you can't make Hedish for Le Marichin, give your Erech Le Machrimin. Why? This is very similar to buying and selling. When you're buying and selling, what's really happening? Transferring of ownership. Same thing is when you make something hegdish, it's transferring ownership for me to hegdish. And therefore, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be done. And how do you know you cannot buy and sell? So, so Rashi says an interesting thing. One reason why you cannot, who said you can't buy and sell in shops? One is again for the same reason you might write star and is what which is what the Shulana says. The other reason Rashi says is because there's a Pasik, on Shabbos, you should not refrain from doing things you normally do during the week. And therefore you shouldn't do that on Shabbos. And um or the reason is because you might write stars. It's all about you might write stars. Okay, we'll stop here, we'll continue tomorrow in Mitzvah Shem, same time tomorrow.